In a previous video that I made concerning the Chinese reaction to the arrival of the Europeans in the 19th century, I think I can forgive some people for assuming that I was showing an, a good example of obdurate Chinese conservatism as an antidote to uh, J. Philippe Rushton's idea that the uh, Asians are inherently smarter than Europeans. I wasn't saying that at all, although as I say it might have looked that way. What I was trying to point out was, um, when the Europeans and the Chinese clashed into each other in the 19th century, each one, each side of that uh, dynamic, was merely acting in a way that was consistent with all of its experiences. The Chinese were not stupid because of the way that they failed to grasp what they were up against when they came up against the Europeans. Nor were the Europeans somehow smarter simply because they had a technological and one could even say political a leg up on the Chinese. Uh, it's simply because of Europe's history it uh, created uh, a military culture, a competitive culture, uh, in which it was assumed that each country would pretty much always be in a struggle with its neighbors for supremacy. <clears throat> So I wasn't attempting to actually compare the races. Now, one good antidote to uh, the story of, uh, or the perception rather, that this story is somehow indicative of um, Asian stupidity, if I dare say such things, um, is the Japanese reaction to the arrival of the Europeans. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the Japanese are just as Asian as the Chinese are. Uh, but their reaction to the arrival of the Europeans was the exact opposite of the Chinese reaction. They adapted with astonishing speed to the arrival of the Europeans, even though they had all the disadvantages or all the attitudes of the Chinese. They had a culture that was almost, at least in European eyes, self-destructively conservative. They would do anything to avoid changing anything. Their culture was deliberately set up in order not to change. The uh, Japanese warlords uh, in the uh, 16th century, when they first contacted the Europeans, deliberately sealed off their country and kicked out all the foreigners to avoid foreign pollution. But in uh, the mid-19th century, uh, first the Americans more or less forced their way into uh, Japan, and the first reaction was, of course, predictable. The Japanese shogun um, sort of said, no, no, these people are barbarians, we have nothing to learn from them, uh, they should go away or we'll just kill them all. Um, but some Japanese looked at the uh, Americans, uh, it was the Americans first, and said, okay, yes, they are barbarians, they do smell bad, they got big noses, they wear absurd clothes, they have terrible habits and manners, but they got very good guns. <laughs> They have extremely good boats. They crossed the entire ocean uh, in a matter of days uh, because of the machines that power their oceans. We have nothing like this. Not only that, various Japanese soldiers had served as mercenaries in uh, European colonies in places as far afield as what is now Indonesia, French Indo uh, um, Vietnam, uh, and um, and such places as that, or the Philippines. And they noted that the Europeans had gigantic colonial empires that were slowly closing in around Japan, and they said, we better do something about this. They reacted. They reacted in time. They built up a large military-industrial complex, or what we would now call, call one, uh, and they developed a modern economy that could compete with the Europeans. They were able to successfully avoid the fate of China. In fact, they actually joined the other side. They joined the Europeans then in carving up China uh, and Korea. They became a big European colonial power. Now, it's interesting, and one is inclined to ask why the Japanese adapted and the Chinese did not, or the Chinese actually did adapt. Look at them now. Of course, they're adapting. But the um, Chinese at the time took longer to adapt. And I think that the reason is quite simple. Again, it's the Japanese experience. They're on an island, and they're aware that right across the, uh, the uh, Sea of Japan is China, this great big, potentially aggressive power that, whenever it decides to get the idea into its head, could sail across 
and wipe us out. So they understood that across the sea is danger, that they'd better prepare themselves for these sorts of things. The Chinese attitude was, yes, across the Great Wall, on the other side, there's barbarians that periodically sally in here and uh, defeat our armies, but eventually they have to come to terms with the immensity of uh, Chinese uh, civilization and this obvious superiority of our culture. And I don't mean that cynically. I mean, the, the Chinese culture was in so many ways superior to that of all of its neighbors that it was actively copied by them, including the Japanese. So the Chinese simply didn't understand, or at least not in a, I should say, deep down psychological way, that there was a possibility of a foreigner seriously threatening their civilization. Every civilization, or rather every foreigner that actually had come along to conquer the Chinese eventually became Chinese. The last dynasty of the Chinese imperial family were the Manchus, and they were not ethnically Chinese. They were Manchurians from the northeast of China. They were not Han Chinese, but they became utterly Chinese simply because of the fact uh, that uh, that China was simply too big of a morsel to digest. They, you, you had to either give up power or rule the Chinese according to the precepts of Chinese civilization. Japan didn't have that advantage. The Japanese were aware of the fact that they were vulnerable, so they reacted. Two cultures, two extremely conservative cultures, um, Confucian even, who um, did not emphasize adaptability, who did not emphasize change, one overwhelmed, even though it had even more advantages than the smaller one, the, the Chinese were overwhelmed by the foreign uh, invaders, whereas the Japanese successfully fought them off, simply because the, the Japanese history, its experiences with the past, were such that they understood that there was menace in terms of foreigners, real menace. The, their experience, their nurture, everything that they knew about history indicated that, the, that foreigners were not necessarily to be laughed at. Maybe they were to be scorned as barbarians, as smelly people with disgusting manners, but they represented a real danger that we had better come to terms with. That's the point I was trying to make with the video on China, not that the Chinese were somehow, uh, their behavior was evidence that they were just as stupid as uh, anyone else. I don't believe that the Chinese reaction to the European arrival was evidence of stupidity at all. What I do believe it is, it was simply consistent with the Chinese experience throughout their entire history. And the fact that the Japanese adapted was also consistent with the fact that they understood that foreigners represented more than just silly barbarians that we can laugh off. They were a real threat. Thank you.